Hey everyone, welcome to No Nerds. We are going to talk about all things computerized quilting. We are the new computerized education team at Gamel, and we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. So I'm Kat. I live in Oregon, and I've been professionally quilting for about 10 years now. Vita? Hi, I'm Vita Anderson, and I live in Missoula, Montana, and I have been computerized quilting for about two and a half years now. Ava? Hi, I'm Ava Birch. I live in Akron, Ohio, and I um, also do computerized quilting for about two and a half years now. Dwayne? I'm Dwayne Karen. I live in St. Genevieve, Missouri, and I've been a computerized quilter since 2015. Angela? Hi, everybody. I'm Angela Ziaye. I live in Elmont, Ontario, up north of the border, and I have been long arm quilting now for 15 years. Kayla? Hey, um, I'm Kayla Bain, and I'm from Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, and I have been quilting for just over two years, so it's been a fun new adventure for me. Lisa, last but not least, right, guys? Yeah. So I'm Lisa Rogers. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I bought my first gamble in the 90s, and of course, that was a hand-guided machine because we didn't have Statlers at that point, and then I Statlered my machine, and yep, I'm never looking back. Love my machines. Okay. okay, we're going to now go around and share our favorite tip, something that we've learned from a different educator. So uh, my first tip that I'm going to share is from Georgia, and she taught me, there's two things I'll never forget from Georgia. One is when you're putting the net on your spool of thread, you don't put it all the way up, just do it so it covers the bottom half. And two is that it's okay to digitize my credit card. I love <laughs> making my own designs. <laughs> and I always, almost always feel like I have to make a design, make a design, make a design. And she was like, no, oh, digitize with your credit card. And she's right. Sometimes you just have to do that. <laughs> Dwayne, what's your favorite tip? Um, I learned from a farmer educator how to draw and manipulate patterns, and I totally love drawing patterns, especially drawing motifs for a specific quilt. So, um, and and that's that's just like a whole nother facet of the computerized quilting for me. Lisa. Okay, thanks, Dwayne. So the first thing that I learned was not to drop my bobbin case on the floor because then you need to make a stitch. But the most important thing I think I learned was that when you're troubleshooting your machine, make one adjustment and then test it and make another adjustment and test it. Because if you make 10 adjustments, you might fix the problem number three and offset something on number four and you don't know what you adjusted. So that was what I think one of the most valuable things I learned when I first began is how to troubleshoot my machine by making one adjustment and testing it. That's a good tip, yeah. Um... Oh, go ahead, Angela. <laughs> I think um, speaking from um, one of the old digital diaries they did an episode on the things that they wish they had known before starting and um, I watched that a few times after I got because there was such great tips there but one of them was how to take care of our bodies and we don't realize how physical um, our long arming is sometimes and how standing straight and taking breaks and sitting when you can and and um, those comfort mats, I have one of those mats. Um, oh, I think she may have frozen up. I know that they're having a snowstorm right now. Um, so hopefully she'll come back to us. But I agree, like my shoulders are always hurty. And you have to remember, like, because you're always going like this. You have to remember to kind of put your shoulders back so the other muscles stretch out also. Or just being tense in general. You're so excited. You're so yeah. in that you don't realize you're doing it and just to take a step back and take a breather sometimes yeah but. and probably Ava and hand guided I'm assuming it's a lot too because you're really moving your shoulders and you're when you're hand guiding 
Right. And I didn't talk about that, but yeah, I've been actually hand guiding for over 20 years. So you're right. It's a very different beast, even though when you're when you're hunched over clicking out those precise points for your boundaries, that gives you a stiff, can give you a stiff neck. Mm -hmm. But um, I think Angela's back, so she's going to finish oh. talking about her tip. Oh, one of my favorite ones was the TV straight ahead. Did you guys get that oh. part? So oh. mounting, a TV, mounting a TV so you can look up straight so that you're not always turning to the left to look at your screen all the time. That was one of the very first things I got my husband to install after the machine was installed. <laughs> I said, put a TV up there, please. And yeah, that's I love that. That's yeah. a good one, Angela. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Mm -hmm. Kayla, did you go? No, but I will. Um, I have so many because being new and especially being on the journey with Gamal within this last year, there's so much that I've learned. And um, I think the biggest thing that gets me is when I'm at my machine head, I always push my buttons too fast. I think I know that I'm moting to the right thing, right? And um, I always miss it. I do. That's just nature of what it is. So holding that um, bottom center button, the cancel button, while yeah. I'm moting to reverse my order so that I can get back to some of those that I missed over. So that's one I use all the time. I uh, It's funny you say that because I do that too. And I get so frustrated with doing that, that I changed my mode stop. So now I only have three things. So if I go past <laughs> it, it's fine. It's just going to keep on going. Sure. That's one way to do it. Now, speaking of those, do you have um, certain setups for the styles of quilts that you do? I have different setups personally, um, based on where I am. So my stitcher has one setup. My desktop has another setup and then my laptop has a third because okay. usually I'm digitizing on one, um, working out maybe templates or client client patterns on the other and of course stitching on the styler. So I have different for all three so that I know works what it, so that it works with what I'm doing. Sure. Sense. I think that's a great feature that we have, but we also also have to remember that if we call a tech or we call somebody for help that they don't know that we've changed that toolbar or the menu strip. And so if they're trying to help you over the phone and troubleshoot with you on your phone, maybe it's a good idea to put it back to factory setting and then take it back after you're done after that call because they can't see that your toolbars changed, right? <laughs> but it's a great setting, I agree. Vita, how about you? How many settings do you have? Like uh, tool strips? Oh, is she frozen? Okay. So my internet, my internet is a little bit uncensored right now because it's super windy out. <laughs> um, but so I've been watching the latest thread and the digital diary ever since I got my machine. I get the newsletter notifying me that they have dropped. And so I've always watched them. My favorite thing and one of the tips that was most helpful to me because I do a lot of custom quilting was Christine Perigo's suggestion to use a side load needle. And I, it has become my best friend in burying my threads. But that was like my, I mean, I remember that aha moment, like, where do I get that? And I was online right away ordering one. Do you find you use that like when you're piecing as well? The side needle? No. no? Nope. Only with my long arm quilting. Interesting. <laughs> well, um, Thinking back about, you know, what did I learn from the previous computerized education team? And I, there's many things that were helpful, but what I just want to say in general that when I went contemplating going from hand guided to computerized um, and just um, being able to rely on them to give me some tips and, you know, taking the leap that was really important. And so I benefited from that. And from the new team, one of my most favorite tips comes from Angela. <laughs> and that was 
I bet Angela knows which one it was because I got super excited <laughs> and that you, and and passed it on to Kat, who then was excited because we were talking about the tool strip and you can move your icons over without having to actually go into the menu by dragging your icon and pressing the alt key yeah. and if i screwed it up please correct me angela no you didn't <laughs> that is correct Ava. yeah and it's just a temporary hold so if you are don't want to mess up any of your customization on that previously made two strap but that particular project you're realizing you're using that one thing a lot of times it's so nice to be able to just move it over I've temporarily it often <laughs> since then oh, me too good. <laughs> See, that's the nice thing about our community, right? Like we, there's 101 ways to do things in in, in CS. And so it's so nice um, to be able to do this kind of stuff and chat with each other and learn and find other ways to get the job done. <laughs> I agree, Angela. Being on this team and working with all of you guys, we all learn from each other and I've learned a lot. And I really appreciate that too. It's been a lot of fun. You know, and we've even learned some things from the students. I know um, one of the tour stops earlier this year, Vita and I were together and one of the students asked if we could rename the quilt groups. And I was like, I don't think so. And then another student went, oh wait, but you can. And she told us, and Vita and I both had the biggest aha moment. We're like, what, we can do that? And so yeah, then the rest of the tour, we started telling everyone, hey, did you know you can rename these quilt groups? And that was all because a student brought that up. So yep. that's what's so great about, like Angela said, about the quilting community. Mm -hmm. You're wondering why we decided to call the new show Node Nerds. It also goes back to early, early on in our tour. Uh, Kat was teaching a class in Orlando and Kat loves to play with nodes. She is not afraid to just move those nodes here and there and everywhere. <laughs> And she actually coined the phrase node nerds when she said, yep, I'm just a node nerd. And it's actually, yeah, I said I'm a nerd. Part. Hold on. And one of the students said, yeah, you're a node nerd. Oh, no, I want to make sure go. that student gets credit. <laughs> yep. And it stuck and we mm -hmm. laughed and somebody said, if you had t-shirts that said that we would buy those t-shirts and it, we just kept laughing about it and talking about it, but also recognizing that Creative Studio is the only software out there for long arm quilting that gives us that amount of control over our patterns. And so as we began to discuss what we were gonna call the show, we decided that Node Nerds was really at the top of our list. So we will be talking about a lot more things other than just the nodes, but we wanted to do something fun. We wanted to name it something fun and to identify this show as something that's really specific to our Creative Studio software. And the best way to do that was to call the show Node Nerds. So we hope that you will get excited about it as well. We would love to hear from our, our viewers what they would like to hear us talk about. If there's something that you've been wondering about and wanting to learn about, please let us know. You can put it in the comments here on the YouTube page and we will be monitoring those to get ideas. Um, you can certainly reach out to us through um, gamel.com and our education page, Gamel. Uh, gameleducation.com mm -hmm. and um, we just look forward to spending time with you and sharing ideas and sharing knowledge and learning from one another. Yeah and to add to Vita's point if there's something specific you're wanting to learn about put that in the comments as well and maybe we can do a show on that going forward. Yep. Anybody else want to add anything? Oh, I'm just really excited to hear what everybody wants to to learn and and uh, hear about, and you know, even maybe they want to get to know us a little bit better too. So we might be able to answer those fun questions. So don't don't be shy to put those in there. <laughs> And we promise there'll be not just information, but we'll have a good time as well. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to know us a little bit better. As Angela said, you'll know we are, we really are fun. So we it'll are. be a good mix of, of different stuff. Definitely. And I love how like we can all like just joke around and laugh. And we hope to bring that to all of you guys too. You know, guys, remember that this is 
Sorry, Kayla. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say people that aren't fun usually say these things. You guys know that. (laughs) (laughs) I promise. (laughs) We're really fun. (laughs) That or we're funny. I'm not sure. We could be fun. Uh, funny. Either way. But for those of the for the viewers that have followed the latest thread, we'll know that in my case, that is not the case. So <laughs> oh, you can be fun. <laughs> well, we are gonna have fun. That is true. And you know what? Nobody quilts because they have to anymore. Our grandmothers quilt because they had to. They had to keep their beds, their children warm and they had to keep beds, you know, quilts on their beds. But we don't do that today. This is fun. And that's why we do this. So we are going to have fun, right? Totally. That was like the perfect way to say it. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah. Do you anything to say as we wrap it on up? No, but I, um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun for all of us. And I hope I can be here for uh, most of them, some of them, most of them and that. But we want this to be fun. We want it to be educational, but we also want you to be successful, too, you know, and uh, we want the quilting process, of course, to always be fun. So, um, yeah, I just hope everybody tunes in and, and we have a good time. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. That's good. Well said. Yeah. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us for our first episode of Node Nerds. We'll be back. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>